Number five, if you look in Galatians 5, which we will soon, not today, and you look at the list of the manifestations of the flesh, it says, for the flesh is revealed in these ways, Paul said to the Galatians, and there are 17 types of sin listed. Half of them are having to do with interpersonal relationships. Do you know what we struggle with? All of us are kind of like sheep, and we get wounded as we bump through life, and people bite us and bump us and harm us, and those wounds get, get infected, and bitterness and anger, and, and just, just it closes us down. And the Lord said, you need and I need daily cleansing of all interpersonal relationships as well as cleansing of what my choices have, have grieved God. And that's why it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses against you, God, as we forgive everyone who trespasses against us. Now think about this. One person can only harm us in one small way. We harm God and, and sin against him in every way. And he is willing to write off all of that and say, I once and for all forgive you of all sins, past, today's, and everyone in the future, once and for all. I just totally, justifyingly remove the record of those and put all that punishment on Christ. But his requirement is that I forgive others as completely. I mean, as long as you're in your Bible, look what it says in verse 14 of chapter 6. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Look at verse 15. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive yours. What does that mean? It means we will not have the joy of our salvation. We will not have the free-flowing Spirit of God through us if we don't have a daily cleansing of our relationships. If we are not kind and tenderhearted and forgiving everyone in our life, in fact, you want to know your spiritual health this morning? If anyone in this building, or camera people, if any one of us know someone that has harmed us at a level that we in our hearts say, I will never forgive them. They ruined my life. They ruined my job. They ruined my future. They ruined whatever, my child or my reputation or whatever. And we hold that. The Lord says, uh, my forgiveness to you, you enjoying the joy of your salvation, is only reciprocal to your kind, tender-hearted forgiving to others, to everyone. As believers, there should be not a person that we know of that we have not absolutely forgiven for all that they've done. You say, oh, they never asked to forgive. They never asked for my forgiveness. You want to know the worst thing you can do to someone? Don't wait for them to ask you to forgive them. Release their sin against you to the Lord because God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'll recompense. God knows the wrong they did. If we release it to the Lord, if we are forgiving like Stephen, I mean, do you think Stephen deserved to be stoned? No. And, and he says, don't lay this sin to them. He was, he was portraying Christ's forgiveness as they stoned, crushed him to death. You see, this is so vital. And did you know it says in, in Ephesians 4, if we're not forgiving, it leaves a door open to the devil? Did you know that anyone this morning that has an unforgiving spirit to that uncle or that teacher or that boss or that ex or whatever, to those parents or those kids, you've left the back door open to the devil and he can torment you, Matthew 18 says. But we'll get to that later. The next one is this, daily protection of my mind. Deliver us from the evil one. What is Satan's realm? Does Satan actually punch people physically? Not normally, rarely. What does he primarily do? He prowls around as our adversary seeking to deceive, seeking to defile, seeking to destroy us spiritually. And it's all focused primarily on our minds. And we are supposed to ask for and seek daily protection of our mind. Deliver us from the evil one has all to do with spiritual armor. 
with us wearing the helmet of salvation and understanding our salvation. That's why it's the first piece, understanding the justifying work of Christ and how it leads to the sanctifying work of the Spirit and what it really means to be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. And then the last piece, daily seeking God's glory instead of my own. Notice what it says, for yours is the kingdom and yours is the power and yours is the glory. All of a sudden, life is reduced to seeking first God's glory, not my own. And it removes from me the lifelong quest to make a name for myself. I don't need to make a name for myself. I want to make his name great. I want to point people to him. I want to be like Philip, who pointed the Ethiopian eunuch to God, and Philip left, and the guy went on his way rejoicing and never had Philip withdrawals. See, we are so used to everything being built around or wanting everything to be built around us. And God says, no, I need you to be daily seeking my glory, not your own, and to be seeking that yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now, what does this look like? Well, basically, this worship means we need to focus on God and seek his control. And then as we seek his control, we follow his leading. We say, lead me, Lord. Focus me on who you are. Control me because you bought me, lead me through life so that, can you imagine the feeling of knowing you're on a mission? Have you ever seen people that they're just so confident where they're going? They're on a mission. You know, people say, oh, you're on a mission. We are to go through life on a mission. We know why we're here, we know how we got here, we know where we're going, and we know what we're supposed to do today. And the today is, follow the one that asks us to follow him. And so we invite him to lead us. And then we say, Supply me. I am afraid. I am weak. I am, I am so needy. I, I need to rely on you today. Uh, what's the hymn say? I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. That was a very mature hymn writer. I would say every moment. He only needed the Lord every hour, you know. But all the time I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. And then we say, cleanse me. This is, this is the constant need we have to keep short accounts and keep cleansed before the Lord so he can flow through us. And then we say, protect me, especially from the evil one. And then finally, this is a big one, empty me. The Lord can't fill people who are not empty. And if there is pride and if there is selfish ambition and if there is self driven, you know, the, the, the driven life, the Lord says, hmm, let's see how far you can drive on your own before you crash. Then you'll need me. See, he wants us, before we crash, to empty ourselves.